Welcome back to game number two of Team Liquid versus Evil Geniuses. We're live here at the International 2017. Liquid, an unblemished 5-0. and EG, expectedly poor performance here on day one. Lumi, they are 2-3 and three against some stiffer than expected competition. Yeah, they, they won one against IGV, which you can make an argument that they should 2-0. -oh. TNC is, I guess, more of an expected 1-1 at Powerhouse coming out from SCA. But and now you've got, I mean, that, that also is a concern, right? Because you've still got some big names to worry about in this group. Oh, GD in particular, the currently 4-0 team, 5-0 team. That's who she, sure. Yeah, you've got LGD Forever Young in Group B, 4-0. GD in Group A, 4-0. Ruru, 8-0. <laughs> she, oh. She's got the best record at the international right That's now. true, 100%. When you, when you have two teams and you remain on 100%, that is super impressive. I don't Derek. think so, actually. Like, that's actually a true statement. By Anyways. the way, that is that is like a must-have for the chat wheel line. Oh, uh, I don't think he said it during a TF. Oh, really? Sure. Shaker for pick. The Lich meta has a new challenger. Team Liquid to me seems to be a team that isn't particularly caring too much about what other teams are doing. Like, I don't think they're gonna copy other people's strategy. I, I feel like they're, they're very comfortable executing their own and they're not gonna pick Lich because everyone is picking it. They'll be prepared for it, that's for sure. And I think the other thing is that Lich is not a very curled-esque type hero where he's looking to actively like kill buildings. He's not looking to defend his own. Yeah, the, like, best, the best defense is a good um, right. offense, he, he a, loves a wise heroes, general once said. Like Shadow Shamans or Visage, that's uh, punching buildings in. Fat Rider reply for me. You've got a follow-up pick available. Historically, love their Sand King. They love the Puck. Banned. Dean Rubik picked a lot in the past against Urshager just because Fissure is uh, such an amazing... Is there anything that jumps out at you is like last game they picked an elder titan in this spot right and honestly elder titan did a lot given what he was up against i mean if they go et here i wouldn't like i, I think it's a fine pick it's more of like what eg's uh got what they're thinking about in terms of overall play style i'm gonna go back for the et I think they like this opening because it doesn't really reveal too much about anything. But I guess you know all the Titans. That's really about it. Bat can be off lane. You know, Bat probably not going to be mid, but I, I wouldn't entirely rule it out, especially if they want to like put else. So I think it's still a slightly flexible pick, and it doesn't tell you much about the overall game plan, I, even exactly. if you know who's playing. It also makes your lane super flexible as well. We saw Elder Titan and Batrider beating up on a Lycan last game, but let's say if it's a different hero. Bat could go into the jungle, ET could just roam into the mid lane instead. So you're not just married to this one particular laning strategy. So early on in the draft, you want to keep your, your lanes you know, somewhat open, you want to keep them guessing, and you want the ability to react. And this two start is, is the ability, like you have the ability to react. Is this the exact same draft so far we've seen? I think so, except... Um, I think MP came a little bit later. The Shaker wasn't... EG was first pick. Ten seconds remaining. We are getting old. We can't even remember what happened an hour ago. I have not had enough. Okay. I have no excuse. I'm drinking tea as we're casting right now. <laughs> Very loomy of you. I mean, I, I, again, I, I think that's what we see out of both of these teams, is they just like these flex picks. They like leaving the laning options open. They like not committing to something too early. Nature's Prophet is another hero that fits in that mold. Yeah, you probably uh, expect his mind control on the NP and the off lane. Uh, uh, have to be. They can run him safe lane, or, you know, Tumba Man and some sort of dual or offensive tri lane. Oh, they had Visage second. But still, a lot of the same faces. Yeah. 
I do want to mention Wyvern. We saw Crit pick it up for himself last game. A lot of the European teams have been uh, kind of really respecting the hero. We see Liquid picking up relatively early. Secret's been playing it. Uh, EG's been playing it a lot. I wonder if it's a thing where the European teams scrimmed against each other and they all kind of simultaneously came to the conclusion that Wyvern is a very good pick given the situation. It's definitely a hero that I think we'll keep seeing for the remainder of this TI. Don't you still feel he's like more of a situational counter oh, for sure. hero? He's yeah. not like, oh, what's a strong hero that I want to take first base? Let me just grab he's a not, Wyvern. You know? He's not a Sand King or a Shaker. Like yeah. he, He's more of like, hey, they're running. I agree. 80 I think billion he's, summons, let's make up Wyvern. I think he's someone that you slot into a draft as a response or if he fits else you've already picked super well, but you don't go into a game thinking, yeah, like Wyvern would be yeah. here, no matter what. Sure. So I do want to point out, they left that... Oh wait, never mind. EG actually banned them. Like, I looked at Liquid's bans, I'm like, they didn't ban Storm, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, EG, surely they're going to want that Storm. <laughs> EG actually. So is this your Sumail Marana? Ten seconds remaining. Or is this... Yeah, I would guess so. I mean, we've... I think we've seen a handful of Maranas, but kind of questionable. Then I'm fully 100% expecting Crit's uh, Bane coming out. He loves playing Bane. It's, I, I think, to be honest, one of the underutilized support heroes that is just like, got stop picking. It sets up Echo Stomp this game. It sets up Arrow this game. Very good brawler early on. You could like walk into MP's lane and start trading hits with them, no problem, because you get good brain tap. Brawler is definitely a good word to describe Bane. So to Elder Titan's also great at that. That would give G really strong lane. We'll see though, maybe so, uh So for Liquid, you know, they love the Matumba Man Lone Druid historically. Lycan obviously they picked last game. We saw the Broodmoth. I don't think feels that great here with the Marana Elder Titan Bat, but you know, we'll see what these last two picks are. Obviously there's the Miracle Invoker. Alright. Just lurking always. It's gonna be Kuro's hero. Yeah, good call. It's you know, Kuro definitely likes having that pushing. I don't think there, there needs to be a lot of discussion on Shadow Shaman as a hero. Um, I think in particular by picking him up here, you kind of force the Elder Titan to be on the bottom lane with the Batrider. Because Batrider by himself, you get shackled and a lot of bad things could happen to you, uh, depending on what the carry is. Could be like a Gyro with Rocket Barrage, could be a, a Juggernaut with Spin. So by picking up Shadow Shaman, it does limit what Zai could do in terms of rotation. There's the Wyvern again. It's not quite the same draft, but... Wyvern, Titan, Batrider. This is where you start to question your set. Like, uh, this is so Five similar. Seconds remaining. Slightly different. So you, you were just, you know, pointing out that Wyvern is more or less a situational pick, and I'm just not sure whether he is good in this particular situation. Yeah, what does the Wyvern offer you this game? He's not... Is, he's okay at sniping the wards, I guess, because of the range, but... He... The curse doesn't feel that good yet. You've got two ranged heroes. There, There's no sign of, like, that big melee here that you have to lock down. But and I don't think the, the, the cold Embrace save is that good either. <laughs> like, there's so much magic damage that it's possible coming out from... It's definitely not a game where it's like, oh yeah, Wyvern really counters their draft, but yeah. we'll see what Liquid pick if it... Obviously, there's some potential synergy just within the draft where Domp can set up for a curse or vice versa. They have a lot of AoE damage, so a big team fight potential. I'm with you that I'm not sure if the Wyvern an obvious synergy. Okay. Talk about the lack of synergy. Faces Void comes in here for a team that doesn't have a ton of things to throw into the Chronosphere. I guess you could put the wards outside of the Chrono and have them hit in. Yeah, I remember the old in the old days, you used to, be able to drop the wards would still attack inside of Chronos. You could actually really abuse. 
now you've got to be careful. So they'll definitely want someone to dump a little extra damage in their last pick. You've Immediate got... invoker ban, because, you know, that yeah. is the damage. So what's in the... the Lina is pretty good. Good against Wyvern, too, with all the nuke damage. Sure. I like Lina quite a bit. Also, Vayne's reasonably well against Marat. Anyone else who's a better miracle type? OD is not that bad. Yeah, I'd say it's a No! Oh. Okay! Alright, so this is great at countering the Batrider initiation. Interrupt that combo. Helps you ensure that the Wyvern can't counter the Chrono. There's a core that can scale pretty hard. If he There's just no switching here, right? Like, we're not going to get suddenly a mid-Miracle Shaker. He has played it, I believe, in the depends, Shanghai Invitational. Depends what EG's mid is. Generally, the mid-Shaker does a lot better against melee heroes. Yeah. I mean, I guess, like, Shaker faces voice just not a combo, really. Miracle Shadow Shaman. Old, like, no-tail mid. I, I think it's just a silencer. But... That used to be a big thing in Heroes. Poliwog Pre. That was his. Are you not afraid of getting fired at all? Just, uh. Fucking some game. Maybe you'll get magically deported despite having a US. I'll get passport. deported? Yeah. I'll get deported for mentioning Han? <laughs> Suddenly Valve is also. Give TSA a call. Sir, we got a suspicious figure here. I don't think you even know what TSA does. <laughs> TSA does not have the right to deport. TSA touches me a lot when I go to the airport and talk to me. Lumi, you were not hired for your immigration expertise. <laughs> Neither is Bulldog, so we're all... <laughs> Alright, we got the Lone Druid final pick. So this is going to be the Artor. The RTC. <laughs> LD, I'm going to need you to focus here. Maybe you should have made that comment then. Okay. But Alright, here we go. Yeah, RTC on the Lone Druid. Lone Druid last pick. How do you how do you feel the Lone Druid like fits into the overall game plan here? I think Lone Druid very good against uh, Kuro's hero, like very little that Shadow Shaman could do. Puts a lot of pressure on Miracle as well, and could help his ally or himself with the the bear able to proc off that Savage Roar to let's say save somebody when when they get Chrono and stuff like that. It is very awkward in terms of how he'll have to play it. But overall, I think he's going to lane much better against uh, the Nature's Prophet. Remember last game, he just lost the 1v1 against Troll's uh, Prophet? I think this game, he's actually going to have the advantage lane. Okay. See if that turns out. Okay, it's Liquid. Do smoke immediately out of the fountain. Uh, do EG. The teams are going to... So as far as our laning setup goes, it will be the mer mid. Be a safe lane launcher. Sometimes we see the... Mail, Rana there. So as far as laning setup goes, completely standard from EG and what you would expect. Looks like the same for Liquid. No shenanigans here. No void mid or you know, trial lane mid. Just straight up classic Dota. I wonder what Miracle skill build will be this when the Chinese uh, silencers go mid, like your SCCC or maybe they they love to actually max the curse, as it does very nicely in kind of your standard two v two mid situation. Curse just gives you so much more damage. The slow allows you to get off a couple more right clicks. But I've never seen Miracle go mid with this hero, so we shall we shall sit here and learn in a bit. Learning with or learning not to what to do with. We're learning either way, so it's fine. Every life is learning. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to like, you know, put myself, absolve myself of this situation, but you just like... I'm, no, I'm, I'm just hammering it home. <laughs> yeah, Gotta... Thank you. Here goes EG. We'll lane for the off lane. Heading there. Gonna be the Shaker starting off to help a bit mid. Quid assembling the tri lane. Initially. Bottom. He's actually carrying a TP start. Who is, sorry? I, I... Uh, Kuroki on okay. the Shadow Shaman. Expecting this 1v1 matchup. Without shit on the bear, but wants to get one soon. 
I can't recall last time I've seen our team. Yeah, I don't think so either. Like when they, because when the EG, when he used to be on EG, and I, they did pick it. Like fear always. Yes, it, exactly. So. I mean, he is kind of in the fear role now. It's also a very different role because Arteezy lately has been playing things like Venom and Razor, right? Somebody that doesn't eat up a lot of farm. Mm -hmm. I think this is a departure to that. Like going back to his original, hey, I'm gonna put the whole team on my shoulder and one v five carry. I think Lone Drew is more of that hero. Yeah, hopefully not 1v5. I mean, you have a Marana mid. Pretty decent scaling core. I tried to dual lane against Miracle, at least initially. It's not working out so hot. Already 5 and 1, even with the Marana bullying crit out of the lane. Nice thing about Silent Tooth. Very high damage output mid. Pretty yeah. good at lane control. And this is where, if he has Curse, I think will help him lane a little bit better. The last word is decent against the male, but I, I don't think he's short on regen. Like, he gonna just eat the curse and salve up or, or whatever you know one adjustment about this liquid lineup uh, and i think where the void is really good is that they're not gonna get completely demolished by the batrider off lane like we saw last game uh, void might get bullied slightly but gh duking out here in the river taking some heavy punishment let's have the boots though should be able to take it away zai still chasing him though gets that one extra punch curls coming in Wants the bounty rune, Oof. and Zai is going to snag it, as well as force the Shaker on his heels, so... Big win for... Yeah, going back to your point about the offlane, not only is the, the Void a little bit more durable compared to the Lycan, he also has a better support, right? Remember Visage was the support last game for Matumba Man, and, you know, Kuro wasn't able to do too much of anything. But Shaman, in particular, could just shackle, and Universe's effectiveness will get a limited pretty hard. For now, some small adjustments to the lanes here and there, but Zai does come back to the bottom. Shackles off. They're going to try to make their move on Mr. Zai. Still only level one, and he might be the first blood. Indeed, he will be. Good. The committed three hero jump, and the, the point in Shackles, perhaps unexpected. Usually, you do see the Shaman. I think there's get the kill. I think there's a debate now in terms of what you get at level one. I, I've been seeing actually more shackles. It depends on what your safe lane carry is, right? Like if you you have a gyro or a juggernaut, then the shackle makes a lot more sense. But you're right. Like he's been holding a skill point for such a long time that it wasn't clear what what he actually got. It's gonna go in again, and there's no way to break that shackle with this dual lane. A big Left weakness feature, that Kuroki has managed to exploit. Oh. Zai gets off a beautiful three hero stomp at the time. Walk forward. One more auto attack. It's not enough. He lives at four HP. Wait. CH? Or GH? GH? Oh. Give up the totem. Give up the yeah. totem. What was the range of that thing? That was a monkey king attack range. <laughs> and now Kuro ports out. That early teleport score. That looked like handy. tiny with the with the eggs upgrade. <laughs> what the hell was that? It is a totem. Got them range. Say it like that. Learning with Lumi. Learning English with Lumi. <laughs> Boy, that would be a great series. Got them range. Let's, Got start, them let's range. start with that little phrase right there. Yeah. That might actually take longer than all of the internationals back to back. Oh boy. Mer you know how this this year, uh, Miracle in the mid lane gets picked off? You know how this year Valve started to do like the, the classic games? Which I really appreciate that. I just hope that what, whatever we got going on right now would never make it into the classic game. Ten years from now, somebody watches this game again. They'd be like, what the hell is this guy saying? Well, you just got to make sure the jokes age well, you know? Okay. Like, it's got to be like a fine wine. You don't want to be referencing like this year's Transformers movie. Universe? get picked off on the bottom side. Yeah, and they're doing it pre-chrono. I mean, I mentioned like they're not going to get run over by the bat, but in fact, they're dominating in the mid lane. They're trying to set up a miracle here. The stomp will connect. Kuro wants here, to though. go. Arrow comes through. It will connect. But Kuro's there with the interrupt. He gets the shackles off with the hex. They're diving this tower. They're tanking this tower. Dumel's going to go down. Kuro wants more. He probably pays with his life. But two for one. But in goes GH. The tower is not cooperating. In fact, GH has to be careful. They might try to go on him, too. Fissure timed, but not placed. Just right. Be able to retreat. Crit's just going to chill and wait it out. EG won the kind of the numerical side of things. It was a two for one. GH just walks in here <laughs> right onto crit. But the fact that they killed the Marana first, 
you could make the argument that you know it's it's Radiant getting the experience, killing the the more important hero. It wasn't all bad for Liquid. One big thing you mentioned, Lumi, in the draft, and it certainly has been the case thus far. Like mind control is not going to crush Arteezy. In fact, Arteezy is crushing mind control now yeah. when it comes to CS. At least he's 21 CS up. Uh, granted, probably a few of those are Triants, but still winning his lane pretty candidly and. Also, keeping the Nature's Prophet locked here. If he leaves the lane to go gank, then all of a sudden the tower gets pressure. Look at the level disparity. Not just talk about farm. That's a level 5 Nature's Prophet to a level 7. Arteezy. Put Savage here. Roar? Here goes the Shackles. The counterplay from Zai with the stomp. And Any now roots? Kuro on the run. Nope. Still good rotation by Zai, keeping his carry alive. I wonder in a scenario like this where you're expected to 1v1 for so long, whether it's good to upgrade your boots to face boots. Uh, it's really not done anymore on the, the Spare Burr, and RTC deems it not important to do so in this game. But I imagine he would be dumpstering even harder uh, on, on the Prophet if he had it. GH getting slowed down here by crit. See this any further. A lot, of, a lot of movement from both teams, mostly centered around the middle lane, it seems, but... So far, not all that many kills. Certainly had higher here on day one. As we look away from the laning stage, more towards the mid game, we're gonna see Matumba Man getting harassed a bit here by Universe. Can Tai walk off that damage? Should be okay. What's the, oh, Chrono. All right, Chrono one, go for the other. <laughs> That's something fresh, Matumba Man, he just wanted the move speed and it seems move speed's all he needed in the end to get the Wyvern kill. I think the game plan for Liquid is to use your long cooldown ultimate, your global is your chronosphere, to set up a kill and then use your your Rastas and your Prophets to kind of get objective after it. Ooh, Fairy Fire. Gonna descend on the mid lane on Sumail. Fissure comes through and Liquid playing around the Prophet and playing around the rotations of GH. Two back-to-back -back kills. Nice stuff for them. I think you could just look back in this series, regardless how the result goes, and, and say Liquid is just playing, to me, a, a little bit faster, a little bit better over EG. It's not that EG is not executing properly or anything, it's just that Liquid is just one step ahead. That That is the difference. They're 5-0, and oh, G's 2-3. and three. Lasso on the bottom lane, they're gonna need some follow-up here. Sumail gets off the arrow. Well-timed rotation, nets them the kill. Obviously, with Chrono on cooldown, it's probably a better time to die as a Void than when you could be potentially setting up big kills. Nonetheless, a good one. GG. I mean, how are you feeling about the mid-silencer thus far? It's, he, he got out CS pretty heavily as, oh, control getting picked off side of that mid lane. Definitely not dominating his lane. He did have to deal with two heroes for a lot of it. Is this uh, a game where Miracle can take over on the silencer? I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not impressed with the, the way that the Silencer has been playing. But the, the beauty of the Silencer mid is that you don't have to be dumpstering the enemy. You could just, you know, part of it is your, your, your global, right? Your ultimate. So even if you're not having the earliest er, uh, impact, you're still effective. You're still helpful to the team. So I guess uh, wait and see is the reply to your question. Yeah, you, you know, you, you wait and see for the, the Bat Rider to blink in, and then you, you hopefully global and can turn that fight around. But right. here comes the ganking party. Miracle going to get slowed down. No global yet. Oh, there you go. Okay. He is going to global. He interrupts the stomp. He keeps himself alive. The rotation scrambles in. Jinch could cut off two here with the Fissure. Ooh. He only gets one. Zai just walks idly by him. Well, they'll at least get the Wyvern kill. Miracle. A plus two for him. That's a total of plus six, but... I keep on looking at this top lane, Lumi, and Arteezy is uncontested, 81 CS. He's not actually the leader in net worth. That title goes to Sumail on the Marana, but he is still about to take a tier one down. Oh, deny the Treants. Hero Treants. Meanwhile, back in the river, Fissure on two, but now the chases on Liquid have overplayed their hand. They've got to back away. There is a Chrono available, but Tumba Man can make something happen, but he needs damage to dump into that Chrono. That is one area where they're lacking as the Shaman will fall. The amount of AoE and the amount of nuke damage they can lob into a Chrono is very limited. RTC now joins bottom, teleports in, walks away from the smoke, and is looking to set up a bait of some sort here. 
It's like, hey, I'm by myself. And all of a sudden, that rider shows up. He doesn't have lasso, though, so I'm not sure how much they could do here. Probably hoping GH overextends. Does seem like EG wants to try and play more aggressively, take more fights as the Savage Roar pushes Matumbo away. GH in the trees by himself. He is isolated. Crit peppering him with that Arctic Burn. And he is going to just get run down. Nice pick. Well, well, is it a pick? Is it a pick? Is it a pick? I mean... GH still running. Surely he dies here. Stop. Hey. They get him. I think Crit could have, or sorry, uh, Zai could have stopped any time, but he's like trying to get his core to kill. RTZ not doing enough. So they're using this lone druid as their early push tool. Takes the tier on top, now he's going to rotate bottom, do the same. Very different from game one in that regard, where Liquid had a massive tower advantage. That is not the case here. EG have only lost one, and they have taken with that bottom tower falling too. Top lane, GH in position here. Arctic Burn cooling down relatively soon here. Can the bird fly away? All right. Cold Embrace, he's got stick. He could get off a Winter's Curse. He doesn't have a TP okay. out. Okay. Goes for the Creep Curse, uh, and then he tries so to nice. walk away. <laughs> GH giving him oh. the punch. Mind Control giving him the auto attack. And down he goes. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, action also breaking out there as Liquid are on the chase. Kuroki's going to fall. Now Zai chasing forward. They've got the numbers advantage here at this point. Miracle's likely to drop as well. That's a extra kill zai on the killing spree another death for the silencer yeah still no midas at 12 minutes miracle is not having a great start i mean a large part of that is doing eg's persistence on non-stop ganking mid right you know it's maybe unfair to say whether silencer is a good pick this game no hero is a good pick when they send four gank parties uh, but <laughs> I, I think the bigger problem is that we're walking into a mid game Arteezy is super fat and Miracle's got a hero that does not match up well at all against the Spirit Bear. So I am quite concerned for the Silencer. Is there a point where Liquid's lineup kicks it up a notch? Is there something in particular that's really going to change the complexion of the game for them? I, I think Liquid, the way that their lineup scales, is like pretty linear. It's not like a hero where, like, for example, Spectre picks up Radiance and your, your fighting force just spikes like really heavy, right? I, I don't think there is any one big item like that for Team Liquid. So, like, if they're going to fall behind, they're going to be behind for a while until they can slowly win one team fight, claw yourself back. This is definitely not a good sign for Team Liquid. Um, I like to I like to see them use their Chrono and and uh, Global together and, and get something going. But again, it goes back to the draft. Like, what are you comboing with that Chrono? There's just not really that much. Yeah, like Nature's Wrath and uh, I don't know. If somehow they're all on the At side of the Chrono, <laughs> just the, like, yeah, the... Echo Slam, yeah, it's not great. And this ain't great either. This mind Control will get lassoed and picked off in the top lane. Universe had a pretty rough lane, but they've been able to make effective plays despite that, and despite the fact he only now gets his blink. There was a setup in the mid. Meanwhile, Sumail jumping in into the R Splitter, and another pick off the. Kills just keep on rolling in for EG. Be too flustered by the potential turnaround of a global or chrono. In fact, that chrono only now cools down. But my man steals a haste rune and it's out of there. So, I really appreciate another great performance from Zai on the Elder Titan. Like, we're 15 minutes in the game. He's pretty much been in every single kill. Like, I think he's missed three kills. And he's just so effective and this is like we're not seeing him combining with the rest of the team yet in terms of like the curse into earth splitter that you mentioned during the draft so i think moving forward this is definitely a hero that teams have to worry about when facing up against ichi or rather uh, also digital chaos because boba invented that hero so it's going to be playing it too and that's a big ally an x factor in the draft is if there's a hero like that that normally teams wouldn't want to ban or even consider that you have to work with but we're in the game now, and that's where Universe is going to go down. Liquid, pretty hefty commitment. Dropping the Chrono for that will get the kill. But Arteezy just really farming bottom all the while. He is not going Radiance, though. This Something we used to see more of was that Maelstrom build. It kind of fell by the wayside, but Arteezy it was like bringing it back. You know, it's normally like a Midas into Radiance or, or Maelstrom, but no Midas either. GH popping that Shrine. Global comes through. They're going to take a team fight. Echo Slam's going to be there. They will take down the Sumail. Question is, can they take down Crit as well? Crit still tangling up a little bit. Enchant Totem ready.
go. And I do believe Crit, with that stun hitting him, he should go down. Meanwhile, on the other half of the team fight, great Earth Splitter coming back in. Mind Control should just get burned down. The wards gets committed. They want Zai, and they will get Zai. But they, they might, might lose get a little more. more. They're still chasing. Actually, Kuroki might die oh, here. Kuro He's no in the momentum. flames. Easy double fed back the other way. That's costly. EG salvage what looked like a really bad fight. Yep. Arteezy is going for that full right click build now. That oh, he's going just range build? Yeah, it looks like. I say that with a tone of surprise because normally when you see Lone Druid nowadays, it's just all bear, right? Like, it was Midas, Radiance, and you just go into melee form. It was what, them. like a three to four month period where everyone was doing that range, like. Long sniper. Snipe, sniper with a bear. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I love that build. I, I guess I was just not really paying attention. The fact that he doesn't have boots on his bear should be a telltale sign, right? Like, normally when you see more of the bear build, you definitely invest the boots on him, at the very least. The sad bear. Yeah. Not been adorned with a whole lot. Been given an orb of venom, a quelling blade, and stout shield. Ortizzi is abusing that poor animal for his own... Twisted purposes. I guess if you're looking up against who you're facing against, being just a long range right clicker, it's just good against heroes like Prophet and Void, right? Just the further you stay from those heroes, the, the, the better. You still retain on the whole demolish bear pushing, and they will take down yet another tower. Tower hits the deck, no deny for the tree this time. First pushes in. They are trying to split push a little bit with Matumba Man top and Mind Control bottom, but Lumi, they are not the split push lineup that they were last game. Like, they could drop the wards, the Prophet can do a little bit. There's some long cooldown story about there, and yeah. certainly just not as good at taking objectives as they were. LD, take me back and talk about kind of range Lone Druid as kind of like a force in the mid and late game. Do you think he's. Like, I think one of the strengths of the carry Lone Druid is the fact that you had a ridiculous respawn talent back in the day, right? <laughs> was it minus 60 second or something crazy like that? Yeah. That and you don't have right. that now, so... Is that... Like, can you even play that kind of style without that respawn talent? Yeah, I mean, I... I think so. I think, to your point, like, how good is the bear, actually, this game in fights? You've got a lot of control for him, whether it's just sprouting the bear, uh, shackling or hexing it, the fish like tons of AOE from the Shaker and the Void. So, I I think in that regard, this is potentially a more like suitable build for the matchup. It, at this point, everyone on their lineup is effectively a pretty long range damage dealer as Liquid Smoke and get caught by a dire scan. So yeah, I I think you made a good point that it just it suits the matchup, uh, even if it's not like on paper like you know having the same steroids an ability that he did in previous patches. I mean, at the same time, I think having Radiance against these, like, relatively squishy in heroes like Shadow Shaman, Silencer is nice. Um, but it looks like we're not going to see a Radiance. And we'll see how RTC kind of progresses through. It's going to be the Hurricane Pike next. Another good way to get out of things like Sprout and whatnot. Sad thing is, even if the bear has nothing on it, it's still worth just as much when you feed it. And it's a lot easier to kill without those items. So, careful. So if Rim Wards gets committed, I think they could just clean that up pretty quickly if they want. Expecting EG's ability to defend towers here. Oh, power is going to have to get denied. Well, they Somebody might not be able to. I mean, that I think was a pretty prime easy deny there, but... Yeah, if they, if they both went for the deny, I think they could have had it. I don't know if Sumail alone would have had enough damage. Maybe Sumail, we haven't... Talk about him too much, um, but one thing that I do want to mention is that Marana scaling into mid and late game as a right clicker, pretty amazing. She has one of the highest int gain, sorry, not int gain, <laughs> agility gain uh, out of agility. I think it's actually the second highest agility gain uh, out of all of the agility heroes, sitting at 3.6. As and you imagine, don't, don't forget about that leap. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you get to 25... The leap talent, you get the damage talent. Oh, for the bear, You too? get the attack speed talent. Man. Marana can be a decent right clicker with yep. the talent. Introduction of the talent tree. Most people have been going for the, hey, I'm going to go for an axe as a farming item and then back into right click. This is actually the first time for me to see a... Straight right click. Like, straight right click. Yeah. And, and the problem with this build is that 
it takes a long time to come online because Marana needs like at least two to three items to come online and generally eggs served as an item that made you relevant early as you scale back into a right clicker. But this game, he has Arteezy to be kind of the, the gap. GG smoked, wanting to make the move here on Matoma. Man, the global came out quickly, and then GH spreading the trap. He catches two. Now the Chrono follow up, locking them down. Can they finish the trick? They get the bashes, they get the kills. Global, absolutely massive there. A two for two thus far. Make it three down for EG. And Kuroki once more, he's chased after Sumail, but Sumail got the mantle off. The illusions are killing him. Where's the backup? Kuro doesn't have it. A three for three, a bloodbath mid. Even the Radiant Courier serving itself up on a silver platter. EG do keep their big damage dealers alive though. Wow. And they want to push now. We saw game one, GH coming in here, preventing the Sumail Chronosphere. That was absolutely huge. This man could see into the future and he just did right <laughs> there. And what a turnaround. I, I do believe Crit made a mistake on the Winter's Curse as the curse prevented the, the Marana from finishing the kill. We're gonna watch this team fight one more time and look at how prepared GH comes and bang, hits a two-man Chronosphere. The global was also almost instantaneous, like maybe half a second reaction time there. And then we're gonna see Crit's curse. I, I think Crit's curse prevented Sumail from right clicking and killing him there, but uh, was able to actually isolate mind control on the back line and kill him in there. Yeah, good job by mind control trying to silence the Wyvern. It was like a split second late, unfortunately, but... Right. That is his number one target in these fights, I would say. Maybe the Elder Titan, but he's a lot harder to kill. Mid lane. Let's see if he gets sound stuff. Do Liquid really want to take a fight with no Echo, with no Chrono, with no Global? This is not a great time to be engaging. They're on the run. EG are going to punish them for this. They get the Root, follow-up kill coming through on Kuro, the Fissure from GH. Quite late here to try and save the team. They will eat away a few freebies, and now EG. Launching into that Roche pit. Grab an Aegis. And with the power of Leap, I think they get this pretty easily. Yeah, uh, no Chronosphere like you mentioned, although it's back in 10. Lobo is still down for 10 more or so. Yeah, they, they're gonna get this Aegis. I gotta say, if you finish day one splitting games against all the teams you face against, probably not too happy, especially if you're EG, but if they could split the series against Team Liquid, who has been just running truck over everybody. It's, it might you, not be the You worst. just get one point a game, right? It's, yeah. They had one TI where I think you got three points for a 2-0, but I don't think they've ever done that again. So, yeah, splitting games is just fun. Mail gonna go. Oh, he picks up the Maelstrom, so double Maelstrom. Manta. Obviously, Marana gives you a lot of attack speed, so that's a small like point of additional synergy with the leap that that'll also help our TZ combine that with the rabbit. Yeah, the Manta obviously for the global. He wants to still have the ability to escape or fire his arrows and whatnot. Um, and this is where, as a Jilly carry, you're you're getting to a point where you, you look, you know, it's it's butterfly. Can I can I just take over the game, or do I need something like a uh, MKB to deal with? Uh, you know. This chance and evasion and stuff like that. Well, there's no, there's nothing like that now. So I, I mean, I just think butterfly is an incredible value sure. item. It also helps you just farm and move around the map faster. I with mean, the, the move speed. There, uh, there's also well. things like you know, do you see ghost scepter from coming out? Then you might want to think about a diffusal blade. I don't think anything like that is also coming out. So butterfly straight up looks like a pretty decent option. Man, Ghost Scepter used to just be the, the for value, just like buy it for the stats and who cares if you even get the active, but very forgotten item with the Fusal Blade being as good as it is and yeah. Ghost Scepter itself having been nerfed out over the year. Reminds me of the, that, another another old one was the classic was the Racer Gaming, Bone 7 Dota. I mean, we were talking about him earlier. Seven Dota. Oh, no, I think with him it was the. Sorry, with him it was the null tallies. Bracer Gaming was. Uh, what else? His was the null tally. Crit. Profit. But here we go in the mid lane. They're trying to set up a crit. The turnaround comes from Sumail, but now he gets global silence to control the Chrono. Oh, no. He interrupts Sumail as he tries to pounce out. The Cat Lady has been caged. They kill her once. Can they do it a second time? They try to finish off Zai. They haven't done the job just yet. And now Mind Control's in trouble, dragging him away. Matumba Man chases Sumail, but it's a fool's errand. Now he's in danger. Miracle coming back into the fight, but it's into the waiting arms of Arteezy who controls it with the bear. They're fighting in, under the wards, Shh. but it's not enough damage. The Earth Splitter cuts them off, deleting the full five-man squad of Liquid, who now find themselves in danger. Tier two 
about to be mowed down. Maybe even tier four. three. Yeah, like you, you respawn as Void and, and Silencer, but you don't have your Global or your Chrono. This is definitely going to be a tier three, if not more after that. Sumail is going to jump forward for that attack speed for his team. We'll see. They might go for the, the full Rax here, Lumi. Yeah. There is no Chrono available. There is no Echo Slam. There are no wards. There is no global. That is at least half the firepower of Liquid in an actual full-scale engagement. Marana, Lone Druid, these carries hit just as hard right now, but do EG want to risk it? They are pretty low. They, they will they respect. They decide to yeah. back away. I almost think they could have forced the issue there, but perhaps not worth the risk. Yep. So very unfortunate. It, it was a good chrono. It was just unfortunate in a sense that Sumail had the Aegis. So it was almost like he didn't catch him in the chrono. And uh, the, the other big problem is that Right now, EG has two very strong physical damage dealers. And I, I feel like Liquid is in a situation where the Chrono almost has to hit both for them to have a chance to win these team fights. Because if it doesn't, I, I don't know. I, too much damage output from EG. It's very difficult otherwise. I think that's for sure. Mind control is closing on the Silver Edge. That will be a big help to try and mitigate some of that damage. See Crit has sprung a little trap for him, planting the Sentry Ward down as he farms. Mind Control is going to go for the Rain around here. Crit hides under the Sentry. That's this the sentry. is a likely trap. Silence comes through. Sprout is there, but he's already flying away. Arteezy's in the neighborhood as reinforcements. Dusts upon dust, <laughs> and the counter dust reigns supreme. He could have easily used Savage Roar to just save Crit, but like, I'll go get a kill. They're going to come in for this, though. The Global was used after GH got lassoed. Now the Yule Scepter comes through. They're going to back away. They were smoking to try and reinforce this position, but the Shaker's been overrun. They'll sack him as well. That's two down. That's a Global down. And just a Global save, as yeah. well. That's going to be another tier two. Miracle, they ping him out. Liquid, all that discipline we saw in game one, all the cool... Tom and collected Dota escaping them now, and EG stepping up to the plate in a big, big way. Looking, they might finally be able to take a game off Liquid, who have just been unstoppable so far in the groups. Yep. And like you said, it's, I mean, it's a very important game for EG. You don't want to go into day two, two and four. If right. Rain 3 feels manageable, all you have to do is win you know, a couple of matches, maybe you tie the rest and you're likely to get through the upper half, but you go in 2-4 and suddenly you have very little margin for error the rest of the way. And, you know, for EG fans out there, this is could be arguably their, the toughest day in terms of the opponent, the quality of opponent that they're facing. I think the rest of the group might be a little well, bit... Well, there's LGD, right? Yeah, LGD is the other tough team, but... I think and, and, I mean, I do remember old... There there have been TIs in the past. God, who was it at... TI3 or TI4, there was somebody who went 6-0 and on day one. I just and just didn't make it to the playoffs, yeah. I want to say. God, was that Liquid? That might have been. It sounds like a very old Liquid-esque thing. I can't remember. Now. Melody is really kicking in Lumi. Man, you got, a, you got that sleeping voice going on as well. <laughs> Thank goodness this is the last game of the day. Uh, I, I have energy. I'm just. I'm, I don't I'm, know. I'm man. saving it. <laughs> saving for the right play. Saving strats for the TI main events. You're saving your vocal cords. I'm course. saving myself for Dota that is worthy of hype. I've learned from my wild days. Man, this is. Well, this I was is a not young the, lad. This is not the LDI Casa with. No more chat wheel. Like the LDI Casa with back in TI3, like vocal core was dead at the finals, and you're like. Just vocal cords were in. dead after the group stage. I came to TI2. Yeah. And, and you were I, still going in, you know? There's no saving know. vocal cords. <laughs> You just go in. We don't need more wows. The world has enough wows. Or not enough, depending on who you ask. All right, well, <laughs> then you can create them. <laughs> All right, bring me back to this game, LD. I feel a little lost. Uh, you know, the, the go graph says EG 10K lead. Well, Lumi, it's the year 2017. Thank you. Keep going. We are currently at a hotel in the great city of Seattle. All right. This is uh, not Bulba's liquid. Explains a lot, actually, you know, that you say it like that. And meanwhile, uh, Liquid are 5-0, and oh, EG are 2-3, and three, but they're looking to make it 3-3 three, three as a smoke Liquid. For that opening, the Moonlight Shadow quickly activated to ensure their retreat. Miracle sticks around, though. Oh. Miracle sticks around, curse him. though. They actually don't see... Oh, they get him with the curse. <laughs> and there was, to be honest, and now he's in a lot of trouble being 
pounded. The arrow comes through. Beautiful connection. Of all the heroes to die, that might be the worst, and he's out for a minute. I think he wanted to force Sap down the river, and his hero just kind of turned in the trees. And the result was, you know, it looked pretty questionable, but... What has the Silencer done for you, LD? Because it has done jack all for me in this game. I would agree. There was one good... The, the global mid where they turned the fight around. That, that was, was more GH. Let's, let's yeah, be real that, for well, a second. Like, it was like the combo, but yeah. yeah, even then it wasn't just the Silencer. It, it hasn't been all that effective. I do think Silencer generally struggles a lot more against heavy physical damage cores, especially ones who, you know, aren't super reliant on spells to do damage in fights. I think Marana and Lone Druid both fall in that category. I also think EG just hits so hard right now that, like, the timing has to be absolutely pristine to avoid someone just dying. Dirt. Like, you global after the lasso, Sumail, or uh, Arteezy might just kill them anyway, so. I do think it's a tough Silencer game. There's, it's not like there's a storm or something, right? Where, like, a perfectly timed global before he gets his, like, counter, like, a BKB or something can actually counter him. Mm. Just not one of those silencer games. Well, he's going into a refresher next. Like, do you think the addition of a second global matters a lot? Or at all? It's just like you said, I feel like EG is more or less... I don't want to say, well, like, immune like to it. They're, they're pretty resistant to a global in the sense that they, they can still fight pretty hard. Yeah, I think they just, they go and right-click you, like, yeah. <laughs> I think if Liquid want to take a team fight, it's, it's actually more about the Shaker and the Void. Yeah, I think the, I agree. the Silencer is just kind of buying them the right time to take that fight, and I, I go back to your point of, they lack damage in the Chrono, like, imagine if they had, say, Alina instead of the Silencer, mm. uh, which was available for their last pick. I, I'm trying to think if there's anything else better, I, maybe Queen, I think Queen of Pain might have been available at that point. Sure. Uh, that that could have served them well in this stage, but yeah, it does feel like the Sansa's point off is oh, he gets no. lassoed, trapped. The one hero that you can't afford to lose might just die at the beginning of this fight. He does get off the global. The Chrono comes out from a Tumba Man. He saves the time walk. They drop the wards. It's basically the dream scenario for Liquid as nobody dies even through that initiation. They get all their spells off and they still are losing the fight. Mind control on the run. Sumail running him down, gunning after him with the arrows and the wards get farmed up anyway. Now it's just feeling like the raw numbers are working against Liquid. Yep. So we're lining here for Team Liquid, despite not having any of their ultimates available right now. Their creep waves are pretty decent. So instead of going for the high ground here, EG gonna go for the Roshi instead. They will get it without any challenge. Your point about the Chronosphere not having too much combo, I think very relevant for the first 25, 30 minutes, but I think we're getting to a point where if you land a good Chrono, the right clicks are starting to take off, right? But they, they could in theory, but he's got a Linkids and a Diffusal Blade, right? Like there's I no mean, Miracle's hitting pretty hard. Oh, yeah. Mind Control's okay, you know, it's, it's, it's not pretty, great, but... He's only got 18 stolen in. Like, I've seen support silencers with like 40 sure, at this stage sure, of the game, yeah. so... I mean, my point is, it gets better as the game progresses. Your team's gonna pick up more and more damage, so... Yes. It, well, Silencer is an infinitely scaling <laughs> core. You know, you if go. this game goes a thousand minutes, Liquid have a hundred percent win rate. Have you ever seen a thousand minute Dota game? No, but there's a first time for everything. There you go. I like that spirit. Just please bring me coffee if it goes that long, Val. Arrow, not gonna clip on Miracle. And Prophet does what Prophet does best. Pressure side lanes and hope that EG goes back for it. You have been very patient about this. I guess this is one area where, um, you know, it's nice having the bear because you can siege a little more safely than if you have to commit the hero in. But he does have ages. Yep. You have cheese up on Sumail. So certainly all the tools are there. They've both gone for their long range hurricane pikes and low ground Arteezy getting to work. Somebody kill that ward, man. That ward is allowing the siege to be happening. And that, that's a dead melee rack. Yep. Liquid simply do not want to walk. Okay, they're going to glyph, but. Did he? Okay, dead bear. If, if he ever gets an uphill hit. Backdoor protection. A lot of missing here for poor Arteezy, but now the Chrono gets the point. They make the move on Sumail. He's got the cheese. Ooh. He's down for the count. That is. Cool. And now can it catch any on the stragglers? Run. Oh, GH on cleanup duty. Silence comes through. The Sprout's there to give them the vision, but the Spirit lending a bit of an assist as Crit tries to float away. Doesn't look like it'll make it out. Glimmer Cape ineffective 
They give up two. They did not get the melee. Those uphill misses for our. There's no buyback for, for Sumail. Can they just all go top right now and make something of it? The tier two standing in their way. They don't. Top, top. There's nothing there. They don't realize he doesn't have buyback. I don't think they go for that. They well, might they're shift. definitely going to go for the tier two, right? Like, that's the, the ultimate safe option. They're, I, I guess you're right. Don't have caster vision. <laughs> oh. It's not Sorry, I yet. just got a little bit excited, you know? Like, Liquid is down for so much, and all of a sudden, like, a ray of hope. Don't count them it's boys okay, out Lumi. I, know, I know you've got a lot of Liquid cards. Not to lie to me. <laughs> this is a safe space. Safe space? No one can hurt you here. I actually forgot to... Uh, do my fantasy. Oh really? I, I just I was so tired. I just went to bed. What's your best card? I don't have a golden envy, so it doesn't even matter. That's the real reason why I'm not doing the fantasy. <laughs> Although to be fair, if I had a golden envy, I would have like negative points by the end of today, so you know. Liquid are now finally able to venture outside the base to get precious ward down and immediately, you know kills it so that oh, was good while it lasted now going for the bot's eg are gonna try this again it looks like they still have the aegis there is no glyph this time butterfly coming soon for arteezy who is extremely farmed sumail still has the cheese so i mean all they've really lost is a bit of gold can they make the move now chrono is ready global pulling down in 15 almost enough time echo, echo. interruption on universe but there's no follow-up he gets back safely, didn't even commit the lasso. This could really come back to haunt Liquid. Got the Hex off as well, but... G just retreat. They're gonna probably wait for this next wave and then try it again. And they did get the melee racks while that was all happening. Objective clip. That was the one that they, they came for all along. They go get it. So, you know the play that Liquid just made? You, you jump on Simmel, you chrono him, and you get him killed. I'm not sure if that play is going to remain effective as the game goes on because Crit is going to be watching out on that. He's going to position himself in a way where he will get off the, the Embrace. Uh, in the draft, we're saying the Embrace might not seem very good uh, at the time, but as we move more and more into this late game scenario, the Embrace is going to get better and better. Might be the game turner, in fact. So. Yeah, and Liquid, while they have like okay early to mid game nuke damage, it's not damage that really scales that well. There's Right. No, Lino with Laguna Blade or Invoker, who could really dish it out and counter the Embrace hard. I'm pretty sure Miracle will global, though, uh, in conjunction with the Chronosphere, so... Crit needs a way to debuff that Silence off of himself, and he is working towards a Lotus Orb, but... It's gonna be a while. Yeah, it's gonna be a while, given, you know, it's a 5 stage support and stuff like that. 38 minutes in, EG. Still struggling to break this game wide open. It's been about that 10, 11k gold lead for some time now. They did get closer to 20, but the spike has halted. Do you, like, walk me through in your mind how Liquid can fully get back in this game. Do you feel like this type of lineup just can take it late? Should they just be trying to farm? Should they be making plays, going aggressive? What's your ideal scenario if you're a Liquid fan right now? Remember the, the, the way I describe how the Liquid lineup kind of scales is that they don't scale, they don't have spikes, but they scale very gradually. And the game has been kind of going long in a point where I think their heroes are scaling to a very dangerous manner uh, for EG fans. So I think for Liquid, you just drag the game out long. Even though they lost the melee racks, I don't think it's like, oh my God, you lost melee, it's GG. I, I, in fact, I think EG needs to do a lot more work. Like two lanes at least. Yeah, two lanes with multiple waves constantly being pushed in because you have a profit on your team uh, as liquid you could easily repel this mid lane pressure so for liquid it's about finding the right fights uh, this whole game has been fighting about uh, about finding the right fights they have been super on point in terms of preventing the bat initiation from coming out right universe is normally so good on the hero but this game every time he comes in he eats an echo slime he, ha he has a hex against him and those are kind of plays that Liquid needs to do to keep themselves afloat in this game. On the side of EG, they are getting pretty close to Sumail's level 25 talent here. Leap attack speed feels like it should be huge. He just actually bought a Tome to try and get him there. Pops the Tome, two thirds of the green is off. I think for EG, it's more about them being able to fight under the global. So, 
even though I said, you know, the global hasn't been doing anything. Obviously, it's been annoying Crit and Zai in particular very hard. Uh, Crit in particular, getting off his curse and, and co-embrace is going to be the game changer. So him getting towards his Lotus Orb is going to be huge. Mind Control is going to show himself here bottom. He did back off for a Shiva's guard. And they are, meanwhile, trying to set up a crit. He tries to flap away, gets locked down, controlled, and finished off. Another plus two. Miracle rising back in the ranks, slowly but surely, finding these kills, closing in on Assault Caress. Like you said, I definitely do not sleep on the late game silencer. This this hero hits extremely hard with the farm and yep. with the kills. In particular, once you get uh, the 200 attack range at 25, it's not you know infeasible to start talking about level 25 talents, but he stands back and it's like a cannon every hit. Um, I've seen I've seen arcane curse also being leveled up, although especially with the void and the shaker, like, you've such good setup to allow a silencer to just sit right back and, yeah. and wail away at you. Some games the silencer is constantly running for his life, but I, I don't necessarily think this will be. A lot of it comes down to universe if he can somehow catch him, but. There's a lot of other heroes to worry about. Universe yeah. hasn't really... There was one time where he got the silencer over near mid. Uh, you know, up near the where the Ancients are. That's been about it. I know earlier we were kind of talking about EG tying up the series, you know, 1-1, one, one, but maybe we spoke too soon. Now, I don't think, you know, Liquid is having a 50-50% chance of winning this game. EG is still advantage, but definitely could see Liquid playing well, winning a fire two, and coming right back. Don't forget, they do have the Nature's Prophet. Now, Grand City hasn't really itemized for uh -oh, the Crit again walks into a smoke gang, but this, this time, time he's breaking one. Yeah. So, Got dodges a bullet. That was another smoke committed by Liquid, and all of this with the Roche about to respawn. They've even got their Serpent Wards ready. They would love to just walk into the pit and steal that Aegis Cheese away. Uh, would be a massive swing of momentum, but not one that EG will play for free. EG, I don't think they know that Roche is up. Unless it's past the, the possible Roche respawn timer. But Liquid obviously do know they've sent Treants in time and time again. They definitely suspect something's up, just judging by the way they're sticking around the pit. Now it's their turn to smoke. They find more success. Remember, we've seen a few ganks from EG where they walk headlong into the global, into the chrono, and here we go. Starting off, Batum Man's there. They follow this up. But do they have the damage to bring Arteezy down? They're trying to focus on this low but he BKBs. Immediately forces Batom Man on his heels. From the side of the fight, Kuroki managed to get a good trap off. Finds his own pick. The supports are dropping like flies, but Ichi's core standing strong. Miracle gets forced away. And now, Kuroki turned on. They've got to keep him under control. Sumail just cheesing up, staying alive through it all. Now the silence for mind control in the sprout. Triple he fights, arrow. And in the sprout, he will die. Four down, double buyback available. But they're just so ultimate reliant on this liquid side. I don't think they can stand against CG in round two, Lumi. So Void, Chrono, or TZ. But what happened was there was a Fissure through the Chrono. So he had to walk out the Chrono, walk around the Fissure. And by the time he got around to RTZ, the Chrono ended. And they just killed him. Arrow topping in, zoning everybody away. They will take that range, Rax. They're moving for melee. Buybacks are not being used on Faces Void. And like you said, even if he did buy back, no Chrono. Gonna try to jump Miracle. They've got the lasso available again. The Chrono buy, or rather the Void buyback, but nothing really to combo with it. No AOE, no control. They will, well, they'll get Sumail here trapped up in the Sprout, but the Glimmer Cape keeps him alive. Cold Embrace there as well. Sumail healing right back up to full HP. Still has the leap. He's actually going in. He wants to fight this more than now. The Winter's Curse is committed. Mind Control's been put under by Zai, setting up with the Air Splitter. This could be a dieback potentially. Mind Control's got to get the hell out of Dodger. TZ plunging in with the BKB. Pushing out the damage. Sumail stays alive again. It's crit to the rescue. No, it's Kuro with the Zap. Gives him the taser, but still, three have fallen. They're dropping like flies here for Liquid and EG. Charging in once this tier three tower, but. Gotta be beware, the buybacks try to keep track of how many heroes can even rejoin the fight. And they do know Chrono is cooling down. Nature's Prophet is gonna start ramping up in terms of the damage output. He finds the kill on Zai in the bottom lane. That wasn't so bad for Liquid. I think Salvage. Liquid, yeah, I think Liquid won that team fight, right? They traded buybacks left and right. Mirana, unfortunately, bought back and wasn't able to get the fight. Now, if they get the Aegis, I guess it's still okay for EG out there, but... So they use three buybacks, but Ichi also used three. Right. So but they get the there. Aegis and Cheese, though. That's the that's the big one. So in theory, that should favor EG in this next fight. Right. And of course, they, they but got... Liquid also have their ults now, which they didn't before. 
Liquid got went from a position where they lost four, and I thought they were gonna just lose the game too. It's like, okay, it's it's not that terrible. Again, Liquid clutching it out in this late game. They need to start dewarding their base though. Like, it's making Batrider's job so much easier to to have this vision. And there you go, they still have to jump. I really feel like they have a damage problem now. Like the only hero that hits hard is the Silencer, and he doesn't seem able to man fight either the Marana or the Lone Druid. Once, when especially when they pop their BKBs. So, I'm Prophet's not... getting there. He he has a Bloodthorn almost finished. Well, not almost, like maybe two K away. And that's essential against the Mail yeah. uh, for that true strike for the team. That said, Sumail. Oh, not not MKB. Uh, sorry, Bloodthorn. I said. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, when you when you use the active. You, you talk about true strikes. Like, did I say MKP? Because, you know, I always say the wrong thing. You're tripping, Lumi. You're tripping. You're, doubt, you're making me doubt myself. How am I making you doubt yourself? <laughs> you're just doubting yourself. Nah, I never doubt myself. EG. So let, let's talk about a triple arrow because it seems really meme And we already talked about how, how much of a big factor the leap attack speed for your whole team is. Do you, do you think that the, the triple arrow is actually good here or? It forces heroes to kind of reposition, and sometimes you just get a, a straight arrow hit. But the guarantee of the, the leap bonus. I I thought for sure he was going to go for the leap, to be honest. Um, I guess it's very annoying, like during Chronosphere, like where no matter where you run, it's there's like a pretty good chance that you're going to get arrowed. Uh, it's also Arrow? a there nice scouting go. tool. It's <laughs> just spray and pray from Sumail. I guess that's the idea, right? You just keep on spraying and praying, and yeah. maybe one of these arrows connects, then you have an opening. I mean, you're looking at this push, and I guess the attack, attack speed bonus is not necessary. Right? Like, a tree is just going to hit things. It's excessive. There's the Bloodthorn that you mentioned. Buybacks are completely lacking. Only Lotruid has one. That's oh, the, the arrow? one hero that's been caught, but the arrow comes through. Matumba's got to run. Now the BKB from Arteezy on the chase, diving towards Kuro, who's been silenced. He gets the wards off in a decent position, protecting the racks at least for now. But Sumail, though he has been controlled by mind control, there isn't the damage bomb to kill him off. Matumba ledges back in. He might just drop. They can't deal with Sumail. Jeez. Oh, then they get the silence off. They will bring him down once. The Aegis is there, though. Lone Druid buyback also available if he needs it. So they Curse! Curse! Curse comes through. Matumbo's dead. He just doesn't have to buy back. Now charging forward his universe. Oh Arteezy cleans up. God. Five man wipe. EG saved the day. Make it three and three for them and a first loss at the International for Liquid. There will be no undefeated boys in blue heading into tomorrow. Oh man. This game just makes me want to think why is it not a best of three like these two teams are so good playing against each other that last team fight that curse he blinked in used splinter blast to break the lincolns and then just bam that was a knockout punch great play by by crit it was very difficult for liquid to come back i think the way the game developed uh, i do feel like the silencer just didn't they didn't get what they wanted out of the hero mm. he didn't shut down either of the cores i like the way eg itemized going for the early bkbs on both the or uh, sorry, the, the Manta and the Marana, the BKB on the Lone Druid, so that they would be able to just consistently dish out damage in fights. And I, mean, I think if that was like, say, I don't know, a Storm or an Ember who's super spell reliant and you get timely globals that shut them down early, it could have been a lot different, but yeah. EG adapted well. I really like the... Maybe Liquid need to reconsider when they pick the Silencer. I really love how RTZ kind of took us back to the, the times where the baby RTZ was playing the hard carry. I really felt that this game, he, he put the team on the shoulder, especially through the first 25 minutes when, when Sumail, like we pointed out, was slowly ramping up on the Murana. Um, his contribution, he was able to take down so many towers and win so many team fights for them. So I guess we don't need to say that Artor is a good player, but he definitely, I, to me, he's a He's not washed up yet, that's for sure. Oh no, <laughs> far from it. Uh, raise your baby rages if you're an EG fan. They saved the day. They are three and three now, and they have had some stiff competition, but still liquid, the real winners of day one, as they are five and one and looking fantastic heading into the later stages of the group. So guys, thank you so much for joining me and Lumi. That is gonna wrap it up here as far as the gameplay action goes. I will have the panel wrapping up the day and then day two. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next time.
Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. LD wrapping up the day. And now it's our opportunity to go ahead and tell you all about how day one of the International 7 has gone down. I say we, I am not alone. Myself, Machine, will be your host. And I'm joined by some beautiful brains, my Dota brain trust that I'll be hopefully picking and getting some insight from these guys. They have been locked in watching all of the Dota throughout the day, of course. Big shout out to none other than we have Quinn, Will, and Mr. Pycat. Yeah. Before we get started, I would like everyone to please raise your dongers as a tribute to the fallen bulldog, oh, gone yeah. but not forgotten. Gone but not forgotten. Will, of course, standing in for bulldog after a plethora of drama came his way. Of course, commiserations to him and uh, we'll be seeing him shortly, I'm sure. But we still have a job to do. We're going to be talking about some Dota. And I guess we should probably start with the series we have just watched. Everyone here on the mainstream will have caught it, uh, getting to see EG split that series with Liquid. The guy, the casters were just saying, Quinn, I'd have liked that to have been a best of three. Were you enjoying that one? Yeah, I mean, it's two of the teams that people expect to go really deep into yeah. the tournament. Um, both the games kind of one-sided, which is, you know, a little bit unexpected, maybe a little bit of an outdraft coming in in both games. But, you know, you can see they definitely have potential to, like, go very deep in the tournament. From both of them as well, Will. Does that seem to be the general consensus, especially? Was that just kind of confirming your initial Well, suspicions? I feel like the, the game just now, yeah. I think it was, it, was, it was quite even up until the point where I think EG kind of escalated with a few kills. I think the score was 16-16 at one point. Yeah. And then it kind of just got out of hand. They got a few too many kills on the lone route. And then it kind of rolled off of that. I think this was actually a pretty even game we saw just now. Like, up until that point, it, it looked like it could have gone both ways. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just, uh, it's cool to see EG actually pulling it back. You know, they, they started rough. They went two and four, uh, two and three. Yeah. And they could have ended up two, four, but they actually managed to pull it back together. Cool yeah, we'll be, we'll be taking a look at all the standings just to put it all into perspective for everyone at home uh, towards the end of this one. But we're going to kind of walk through some of the highlights and lowlights. I think, actually, lowlights is where we're going to be starting because... Uh, Expectations were a little uncertain for a team known as none other than Cloud9. Uh, the anime boys gave it their best shot, but I think what was interesting was that the observation you were making, Pycat, that they'd kind of put a lot of preference, a lot of weight on Lich. Now, what, what, what was going on there with that? I mean, that was a pick that took a lot of people by surprise. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm still a bit curious, like myself. We haven't seen that much Lich recently. Um, at least I haven't seen in recent tournaments, and the hero has kind of been forgotten, sort of. Sure. Now it had... Uh, some of the Chinese teams were banning it first phase. And, uh, well, C9 kept picking it up first phase. First phase Lich? Yeah, they, they, they first phase Lich, but it didn't go so well for them. So I'm not sure what that is about. Well, Cloud9 is sitting at the table as well, zero and four. So it wasn't a, a great start to them. Is there anything to add to that? I mean, Quinn getting to see, is Chinese Dota obviously have something in mind with Lich. Yeah, I think um, one or two of the teams have been playing it in scrims, have, you know, thought it had some value, and I think they may have scrimmed against the Chinese yeah. teams and, you know, uh, like, you know, LGD, LFY, like sister teams. Um, I'm sure some of their friends with Newbie as well. And, you know, word sort of goes around, hey, maybe this hero is really good. And then teams start picking it in scrims, they're winning with it. And then suddenly a hero just moves up to first phase priority because, you know, it's a support, it's a hero you can first phase. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's not like there's a lot of hard counters to Lich. Uh, I mean, Will, is that, is that a bad habit some teams have in terms of just kind of identifying trends from scrims and maybe exaggerating them a little bit too much? It's awkward because scrims are kind of your best data. So sure. you're sort of just playing the guessing game. And oftentimes it's like one person will lose with it and they'll say, is that enough of a sample size? Like, maybe we do it again. And <laughs> part, of the, part of a tournament like this, it's so long that you're going to have to kind of thoroughly examine whether heroes are good or not, whether it's bad or it's just certain teams that can't make it work. So, but I mean, Lich, I'm, I'm really vanilla about, remember, I remember we had this conversation yeah. in a pub, we ran into, we ran into each other and we're like, I hope people stop picking Lich and Jakiro. So what is the, what's the thought process behind it? What's it's, the justification? It's like, uh, when we ran into it, it was like, it doesn't have a stun. It's really passive. The team fight is kind of mediocre. When people get BKBs, you start to feel really bad as well. There it is. Yeah, Look at that Lich. Just yeah. pulling it out first just phase. Goes in there. If you see that in a pub game, Quinn, you're running down mid, right? <laughs> Lich first phase? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> no, no, he's quitting Dota. Yeah, he's done. He's yeah, quitting yeah, Dota. Don't it's, forget. It's, it's like, right, first two, right. his 6K player has taken Lina. 
his other 6k players take it much that's a nature's okay, profit immediately by Quinn. <sighs> i don't know i feel like uh, and this is kind of to me at least what i'm seeing the opposite kind of what the more successful teams oh yeah this but well, this is the one time where Lich was actually like pretty cool, right? Right. This was where you got to see it was Cloud Nine. You got to see I think it was a full five man. Yeah, but they did end up losing this game with the Lich. So you know, even though the chain frost is pretty cool, you know, I don't know how good is it. I feel like the 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 one team, the one thing that the, the teams that I have seen that are successful, it's like both VP and um, I think Liquid. They have a lot of focus on heroes that can deal tower damage. Right. And Lich kind of doesn't do that. Sure, he can negate some tower damage by putting Frost Arm on a tower, but is that really sufficient? He doesn't really add any aggression. Mm. Like, Liquid, they're doing this. I mean, they're running some profit with, combined with a lot of summons or with this Rasta. Now, they didn't win the last game, but that seems to kind of be their thing to go for heroes that can kill towers. VP playing their DK, a lot of heroes that scale with physical damage and whatnot. I mean, just while we're on the topic of heroes, if you kind of to cast your eyes amongst the most picked. Is there any surprises? I mean, I'm going to shout some names at you now. I'm sure you're not surprised about the Night Stalker. Batrider, I know, caught your eye just because it's, it's still, once again, doesn't matter what they do to him, Batrider seems to be at the top of that list. He's always, at TI especially, he's always one of the most prevalent heroes. Just because like, he does so much? They have nerfed, they don't want, <laughs> I, at this point I'm like convinced that Ice Rock just does not want Batrider at TI. He's just like, how many times can I just destroy this hero? Like, what more can I change about him? I took away his other stun, in his flame break, I made everything worse. Like, what else do you do to this hero to make it bad? But that ultimate, when you're at a TI, you're just getting bat lassoed away. Like, I mean, that brother's just, he's like, he's like Darkseer 2.0, right? Yeah, it's like, what those you... heroes, I expect that's not like those two heroes. Hey man, while we're talking about lassoes, you do a mean cowboy accent. Can you oh, say bat rider lasso? <laughs> Can we hear it? You're, you're an American now, son. You see, it's good, dude. You, these guys don't realize that basically when Pycat's off camera, there is no, he never actually speaks in his normal voice. His British isn't very good, though. We're not going to make him do that. Don't. You thought that was good? Like, I that one sounds good to me. <laughs> Seriously, bro. Seriously. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, welcome uh, back to TI. I mean, let's, let's stop this now before we get in trouble. Um, let's do a little talk, a little bit of secret. Now, their mistakes were no secret. There was a couple of them, and they haven't necessarily finished in the best of well, form. This is just going to be a couple of highlights that we've been we're selecting oh, some of the mistakes no. made versus infamous. And they actually ended up splitting this series. Did you guys catch this action? Yeah, I saw this game. I think uh, Secret were, they were doing kind of well in early game, but as you can see, these heroes, they have three fours that uh, don't really scale that well. If you have a Void that's uh, position one in this scenario, they can be fine because he scales. But a position three Void, he doesn't really get that farm. So in the end of this game, they actually don't have any physical damage to deal with this Anti-Mage. And the Anti-Mage combined with the Silencer and also the Ember being a nuisance, it's just too much of a problem for them. I saw your eyes light up, Quinn. Uh, is there anything else to add to the, the pile of kind of a lack of synergy between Secret at times? Uh, I think it's, you know, I mean, you know uh, their performance across the entire group stage or... Sure. I mean, let, we can talk more generic if, if that's something you've got for us. Uh, I, I think a lot of their games, they have some like draft issues, like that game especially. It's, you know, even against a team against Infamous where Secret's considered like heavy favorites, yeah. you know, they go into it. And then, you know, this enemy hero just slips through. Maybe they forget about it or they don't think Infamous plays it. And then you have this really hard game where you're just kind of playing this uphill battle. You have the execution, um, you know, disadvantage where you have to play near perfect to win the game. And yeah. Infamous can make a plethora of mistakes and the game still be, you know, reasonably easy. I mean, if you think about it, let's just quickly go through their results. I want, I've got them up in front of me. That's, I'm not being rude, I promise. I was just trying to make sure I had it uh, up in front of me. But we have uh, a split series versus Empire, split series versus Infamous, and a full 0-2 versus uh, LGD. So yeah. like it has not gone well for them, Pycat. I mean, they're they're two and four. Well, I, I think one thing is it, it, it is like this. Like their drafts, it's a bit too vanilla, you know. It's you see Liquid. They're they're spicing things up. They're yeah. throwing a brood mother. There's some profit. They're going all in with some random push threat. I mean, they're 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 making it work by some cl really clutch execution. They're going for some. We saw that move. There was some fissure into Visage Birds. They're pulling off moves that are very difficult to pull off, but. They're also going with their draft. It's kind of unorthodox, and it's sure. it's a bit different. But when you just when you just go vanilla draft, it's you are the one who who has to kind of be afraid of these random picks. If you're the aggressor, you know they say aggression is the best defense, and it yeah. it is for a reason. 
I mean, surely there's an argument that you, you know, not every team is as mechanically skilled as Liquid and can't get away with picks like that, Will. Can't get away I mean, with the spice that PyCat's talking about. But at the same time, like, Secret, they've got so many good players on their team. They've right. got veterans, all high MMR players. And for me, it's just a surprise, but uh, taking a look forward at EG versus Liquid, we want to talk about two incredibly individually skilled teams. Oh, this yeah. probably was the cream of the crop. Outstanding. This is just an opportunity for us to kind of remember just how good Liquid have looked. Conceding just one game. Of course, in this very series, this was the one they won. Yeah. My favorite part about this was when we were watching it, and both Quinn and PyCat individually tell me they're like, GH is just the best Earth Shaker. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, also, you think about it, they have this guy, they have this guy who's probably the best Shaker in the world. He's also the guy making sure that every team is banning Wisp and Coddle. So he has three heroes. No one wants to give them Wisp. You right. don't want to give them Coddle. So they get Shaker every game. And, and I, at some point, you know, they're going to they're gonna get Wisp or Coddle, and then he's going to win with that too. So, so let's just quickly, like, can we think of another team where that is the case? Where you basically, as a team, you know, you kind of know what's being banned against you every game. So because of GH's abilities on IO, because of it on Coddle, they kind of know what's being taken away. Does that make their drafts a, a whole lot easier, Quinn? Yeah, it's you. It's it's definitely nice. Whenever you know like what's being banned with you yeah. uh, versus you, you can plan out your first phase a little bit better. Uh, you can decide what heroes you want or like first them, um, and you know you can just get to pick them right because you know that they're not going to be out of the pool. Yeah. I think EG has had something like that in the past. Uh, whenever teams were banning their puck first phase against them, and if they're against a team that doesn't play the Wisp, so EG isn't forced to ban it, then teams will ban it against EG sometimes. So they have kind of had this okay. defined first two bans sometimes, but I don't think any team has it quite to the tier that Liquid does. It's not an extensive list then. Yeah, last time something like this happened, I feel it was like Alliance tier three kind of, they had the they had the thing the same thing going for them. There were like a lot of heroes to ban. You had to ban the Bat Rider, the Wisp. They would always get something that was really good. Sure. And now it's kind of, we're seeing it again. And I mean, Shaker's, I'm just looking at kind of the amount of picks. Shaker is up there alongside Nyx, Quop, Night Stalker. I mean, just on the topic of Night Stalker, actually, uh, we were talking about how a lot of the drafting we're starting to identify is trying to counter the Night Stalker. What, what's kind of at the tip of your tongue when you're thinking counters and what's cropped up today, Will? Uh, I'd say the most popular one since the qualifiers, especially, is this Night or uh, the Lycan. Yeah. yeah. Lycan is such a common hero. There was a time period where Night Stalker was first save material because people didn't think there was a real counter to it. You always won the vision game. You took away heroes like Keeper of the Light, which a lot of teams struggle with. It's like, okay, you take Coddle, I'll take Night Sucker. I automatically win. <laughs> but nowadays you have different heroes that can play the vision game, especially heroes like Lycan, that you're not really gonna feel comfortable first phase banning. And so Night Stalker, it's not as flexible as it used to be before and you just picked and it's, it. It's not even just about the Howl. I mean, the Howl in itself is nice because sure. obviously you, you have more time, night time, so you get more effect of that, but it's also the fact that Lycan, he just pushes. And what does Night Stalker? Well, he needs to get some levels, and then he needs to run around and kill heroes. But against a team that just pushes, he, he does nothing, that hero. Yeah. So, Lycan is just, it's a, very good, it's a very good way of dealing with this Night Stalker. Absolutely. And I mean, it was spectacular to see just how, I mean, Night Stalker cropped up for one team as well. It was LGD. These guys are top of the table. It's been a fantastic start for all, in fact. LGD and LGDFY. They are ending six to zero, Quinn. These guys have had a spectacular start. Yeah, they're they're a very solid team. Uh, I think Eleven in particular sort of stands out to me as like a very interesting player. He'll you know play heroes like Beastmaster. His heroes are picked very often, uh, a lot of the time. You know, super early heroes. He very rarely sees uh, his carry matchup uh, that he's against, and he'll play heroes like Beastmaster to get so much out of the lane because he'll walk to the lane with the first wave, and then he'll send his boar and cut the next one and bring it to him at the tier one tower. Or they'll do Night Stalker, Batrider, dual offlines, and they'll pull multiple waves to the towers. He does, comes up with all these shenanigans to get a lot out of the lane, even though he's given very, very little. I think shenanigans is a good word for it. Goofs and gaffs with 11. And I'm just, I mean, was this expected for you, PyCat, to see a 6 and 0 next to LGD's name? Well, I don't know if I thought it was going to be 6 and 0. But like, I mean, we talked a bit about, we thought they were going to do well, and they'd been doing pretty well up until this point before this event. Um, but no, maybe not 6 and 0, but I'm happy for them. I'm happy for Yao. He's my old uh, LGD buddy. He's yeah. uh, one of the nicest, I think, uh, like Chinese players. He's one of the few who speaks English quite well. So, so devil's advocate for a moment. Is it fair to say that they have got some of the perhaps easier opponents so far? I mean, if you have a look, let's just quickly recap. It was Empire, Fnatic, and Secret. They got their, their I mean, you could wins. say that, but at the same time, like... Empire took a game off Secret. True. Secret coming into this tournament looked very good. They won the European qualifier yeah. pretty handily. And uh, Empire as well is no slouch. 
And just on the topic of Empire, word on the street is Rezo had a fantastic game. I didn't get to see it myself. Did any of you guys have eyes on that screen? He was rocking Luna from what I hear and just... Yeah, he just split pushed. Just they couldn't really do anything. Yeah. They went for this old school style. I also hear that he's going to be playing for the entirety of the tournament. Yes, I saw confirmation actually from VLAT on Twitter. I'm sure you guys, if you're fiending Reddit as much as uh, the Dota community does, you'll have seen that that uh, we're going to be getting full Rezo for our TI. And I think, you know, just on that topic for one more moment, as someone that knows him very well, Will, you were saying, in your mind, not biased at all, probably the one of the most skilled players that wasn't at TI. Oh, for sure. That sounded about uh, right. I mean, I'm definitely biased here, but somebody's got to be the best carry in the world, and I think it's my boy Rezo. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be somebody. It's so boring if we just say, oh, he's one of the best. Like, I'm just going right. to start naming sure. best carry. There he goes. He's but so consistent. He never played with that team. He went to after DreamHack Atlanta. Mm. This was you're gonna good. go to Burning's face and tell him <laughs> he bought a Scotty on Arc Warden, man. Did he? Did you not like that? Uh, I mean, it doesn't have an active dude. I mean, come on, man. It was still a cool item build, but he didn't even know he was gonna play here. They they told him like when he got here, there was like a small possibility, but he went to like theme parks to hang out after DreamHack Atlanta. He borrowed my laptop, telling me he was gonna play Dota every day. Didn't use it once. I had nothing to do for like three days straight because of him and. I was trying to help that TI dream. I just didn't know it. <laughs> he stole your laptop for three days. For nothing. No, he was on Reddit, okay? That's yeah. important. That's Still important. don't have it back, by the way. Okay, well, this is a public service announcement. If you see Rezo, we need his laptop back. Um, outside of that, though, they were playing on full gaming PCs for their performance. But LFY, while we're on the LGD train, had a fantastic uh, little dabble. Some interesting picks as well. We saw Zeus and Bloodseeker. What do you make of that one, Pycat? Well, Zeus Bloodseeker, that, that's like an old meme combo. You know, you, you ult and Bloodseeker runs fast, and that's pretty cool. The memes were but pretty dunk. They, they made it work, you know? Actually made it work, so kudos. Yeah, I think Zeus used a couple, in a couple of different comps, actually. Yeah, I think uh, it shows like a very high understanding of the game. Whenever these teams pick these less conventional heroes, LFY is Zeus is sort of a hero that's you know, in their roster, in their mm. playbook. But I think Liquid picked it against Fnatic. They had some Ember Bloodseeker on Fnatic, and they say, oh, this is a good Zeus game. And, you know, they, they're not scared to pick these like less conventional picks, like PyCat said. Like, they're, you know, they're pulling these, you know, spicy picks out, and they're, you know, they, they have like a very open mind about the game. They understand heroes, the roles they fill. And whenever you understand a lot of heroes, that means you also know how to beat them, right? So it's, I think it like shows a lot of prowess for these teams that play these like less conventional heroes in yeah. games that are good for them. And at the group stages as well. I don't know, in my mind, I, I always think like less conventional picks, maybe the ace up the sleeve for playoffs, but you really can't do that. Saving strats for playoffs is not a thing, ladies and gentlemen, perhaps not. Um, but what I do want to do then, gents, with all of that said and done, is just outline the fact that, you know, in terms of meta, in terms of what Well, seeing, you can save drafts if you're wings at TA6. Then yes. you can save a lot of stress. You can just do whatever you want. I'm totally okay with that. And just go pudge takeies if you want to. And still win the tournament because, you know, you're or VP at the summit. Do they do that same thing? They picked every hero in Dota. Just 113. To yeah, just to mess with people. No, no, they only got to 80. They only got to 80. They only I got thought to 80. they went further they, than they that. They didn't have enough no, I think it was, they didn't have enough games. They yeah, and then the games. last game they ditched. They, they yeah. wanted to win. They yeah. were in game yeah. five. Yeah. Like, the... they, they flipped the coin, yeah, I think. Man. They, yeah, they were gonna, if they were gonna pick really heroes you know or not. What, you know what uh, Yapsor was telling me? He's like, they banked on VP still finishing through with it. Because they're like, guys, don't worry. Like, don't worry, they're gonna... Yeah, they're yeah. gonna continue. Nope. <laughs> no. VP were like, okay, guys, maybe on the fifth. I mean, it's pretty DM, though, up. because you saw what Seeker were doing at that tournament. In the end, they were banning the heroes that they hadn't picked. Yeah, so they, they banned, like, a, Wish they and Lightning and stuff. Yeah, 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 they weren't banning normal heroes anymore. The Sly Beam. Yeah. I mean, I think so far we're well above 90. So the majority of the heroes have already been picked just in our first day. Are there any, are there any kind of you know, heroes you're still expecting to see crop up that have, we haven't seen yet? Is there anything to add to that list? I know you haven't had your eyes locked on it, but I mean, we've seen a bit of pretty much everything. Is there any curveballs left to be uh, thrown in? Uh, I think Wraith King hasn't been picked yet. I think mm -hmm. that's a hero that has some potential. I think some teams have messed around with it, tried it. Uh, I know Mason plays it from time to time in pubs. Your so. best friend? Uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're good buddies. Um, but it's a hero that can be pretty good versus like these long cooldown heroes. Okay. LC, uh, Bloodseeker, you know, like we sort of talked about, uh, can be pretty good versus I think that hero might pop up. Okay, I'm interested to know like kind of in terms of uh, how the meta is developed. Has there been much much of a meta development uh, throughout this patch, do you think, Will? I think for the most part, it's like PyCat said, keep it flexible. It's very flexible. Like right now in Dota, we're in a very good spot where we're lucky that pretty much everything is viable. Like we saw VP prove that at the summit, I feel. When we looked at the replay clips, mm. you can say that they're superior mid heroes, but you saw uh, LGD and LFI, the common denominators, they had 
what you would consider out of the meta picks. They had Bloodseeker Zeus in one yeah. game, and when we looked at the LGD game, they had a Leshrac, who I very rarely see. I'm like, how are you going to fit that hero? But if it works, it works. Like you, at a TI especially, that's you have to keep smart. things open. Yeah. We're talking of flexible. Can you touch your toes well? I can. Genuinely. Yeah, it's not easy. Can but you do it right now? Or no, I'm not going to do it on stream. Show? That's weird. It's not weird to touch your toes on stream. It's like one of those things where you kind of just have to take my word for it. Uh, I want a video on your Twitter of you touching your toes. I'll do it just for you. Thanks, I appreciate that. So nice. we're learning a lot. We've learned some Dota. We've learned Will can touch his toes. Can everyone on this couch touch their toes? I haven't tried in like five I don't know. years. Not even close. I haven't tried. Not even, no way. Not even close. Quinn, you look, you look limber. My legs are too long, dude. Oh, to be fair, you do have long legs. Yeah, okay. Well, we've talked about all the important things other than the standings, and we will bring them up for you now, just so you can go ahead and breathe it all in, because our first day of TI7 is coming to a close. Look at LGD, that. LGD, man. <sighs> Six it's and zero. Good. LGD haven't lost a game. That's true. Either one of them. They have got some big kind of big fish to fry, though. Um, they have yet to play the likes of EG. Uh, they haven't played Liquid. They are yet to play IGV. I think I may have said that already. Fnatic are looking, you know, they're off to a pretty, pretty shaky start. It doesn't get worse than that for Fnatic. To be fair, it, though, it sort of doesn't. They had to play the standouts in their group. Like, right. It wasn't easy That's for true. Them. They played Liquid. They played, who else was it? Uh, they've played LGD, Liquid, uh, LGD, right? Liquid and uh, TNC. TNC, yeah. okay. Yeah, so TNC, TNC they could have well taken well. one of those games at least. I feel like, I mean, TNC won one DG. This is a very good team. Yeah, yeah. it's true. I didn't quite get. Oh, I've got and EG went one one in all three of their series. So, curious to see if that's going to be a trend for tomorrow. Just EG one one all the way. Yeah. Where does that get you? Does that get you into the upper bracket? Oh, I wrote it all down, actually. Hang on a second. Depends how the rest do, I would assume. I think it's, yeah, I have it in front of me. It's just a little bit. So the top four teams in each group advance to the upper bracket. Mm -hmm. So top they're four. on pace right now. Yeah, right. They, but they need a couple tools, I think. As long as they, I think they, as long as they outpace probably Secret, yeah. then they're probably in pretty good shape. Obviously, this isn't exactly how you want to look because you're going to have to play one of the killers in Group B if you're going to get such a bad record in uh, Group A. But win's a win. Win's a win. So we've learned a lot today. Um, what, was the, what tattoo are you getting, by the way, Will? I can't remember. What was the, uh, the Chinese parable that we learned? Pi Cat gave oh, it to it was, us? Uh, it, was, it was so good. If it's, you, it's false. If you can't go high ground, then your advantage is false. If you can't go, go high ground. There you go. That's, that's from LGD, by the way. You know, that was the thing 